I'm going to test your candy knowledge. I want you to talk a little bit about your, your years in the candy business, and then we'll get it into the Penguins game. So just roll with me on this. Here we go. I will, I will roll with you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the original candy man. Because why? He knows more about candy than probably Willy Wonka himself. I love talking the history of candy. I love talking the history of business. Ty Ballou, PLBSports.com, of course, Blue Skies Charity for Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy Research at Ohio State University. I'm going to test his candy knowledge. This has not been rehearsed, folks, but I will show you how much knowledge this man has. 1945, still being made in a plant in Chicago. D-O-T-S, as in dots. Tell me about dots, Ty Ballou. Multi-flavor. They come in those theater boxes. They come in different kinds, but get them in theater boxes at, of course, your Coons Market, which is awesome, and Giant Eagle and other stores in, in the area. And you know, Chicago is kind of a uh, hotbed for candy. Uh, Milk Duds is from there, and a variety of different Keith is from that area. But uh, I know that Tootsie Roll owns Dots, and it's a fan favorite and favorite of mine, and it's great at movie theaters. Yeah, and I'm yeah. seeing I'm seeing my son Robbie later today, and believe me, since he was like five. This is his all-time favorite, and I think because of Tootsie Roll and my love affair with them for so many years, it just runs in the family. I love them, too. Now, green ones are the best, Rob, by the way. They, you know, there's lemon, there's cherry, but give me a green dot, I'm in, I'm in heaven. I, I, there's one right there for you, right there, green, <laughs> green dot. Now, another company, Malaco. It's a Swedish company, and you know what I'm talking about, and even though I live along the Ohio River, I wouldn't be fishing for these, and they're not allowed to throw catfish on the ice, but I'm sure maybe after the game, you might want to have a few of these, hopefully a Penguins victory. It is the iconic brand, and I got the family size for the kids later today, Swedish Fish. My daughter just goes crazy over these things. My oldest son's a physical fitness fanatic, but he'll take a couple of those too. Hey, so talk to me about Swedish Fish and why it's such an amazing brand, and it's been around for a very long time. I mean, 1950. And it seems like it's really hit its popularity in the last 20 years, Ty. You know, Rob, I think, you know, first of all, it, you know, obviously it's a unique shape that makes it. They're uh, non-chocolate. They're relatively good for you. Good flavor. And it just, it's Swedish fish. They're kind of this, they're, there's really nothing like that kind of product. So I think people kind of gravitate to that just because of the, the shape of it. Good flavors, good chew, and, and relatively healthy. So that's... Uh, you hit really a couple of my favorites. I love dots. I love Swedish fish. I don't know if you have any Jolly Ranchers there, but 30 years ago I was out in Denver as a director of marketing for Jolly Ranchers, and you know, kind of along the same line there of, of just a variety of different uh, fruit flavors, and uh, and they are growing. I think you know it, you can still have your chocolate, but I think people kind of go back and forth. And Swedish fish is a great non-chocolate candy. Listen, you weren't with us last night. And this is not a paid endorsement. I only work for food, and sometimes I have to pick up the tab anyway, and that's okay. But I was at the Brighton Hot Dog Shop last night talking about golf, the memorial beginning tomorrow. Alex Childs, the great teaching pro at Fox Chapel, and talking the G7 Summit with Dave Pasqua, who's been in the steel industry his entire life, and he's traveled to Japan many times. Let me ask you about the rest of the world. I, I mentioned Swedish fish from Sweden and America, Chicago plant, Tootsie Roll. How are we faring in the global market when it comes to candy? You know, I think we're faring very, very well. I mean, there's, and domestically, there's a lot of incredible candy companies here. I mean, two coming off the top as far as Hershey and Mars, which are global companies with Snickers and M&Ms and, of course, uh, you know, the Hershey bar. So, you know, there's a perception that, that European chocolates are slightly better. And, and it, it, you know, they're certainly different. So I think on the, uh, on the chocolate side, you know, maybe Europe has a little bit of a, an edge on that. You know, brands like uh, Godiva, brands like Lindt that make uh, great products. But the U.S. manufacturers do a remarkable job around the world. I mean, who doesn't like M&M's and I said Hershey bars and Snickers bars and, and Heath and those kind of products. So, no, we do uh, very, very well here. There's a lot of... Really tremendous candy companies here. Um, of course, I you know I, I met you when I was running uh, Clark Candy here a number of years ago. That is now owned by uh, Necco, New England confectionery company out east. But uh, no, a lot of great candy companies here and, and uh, growing a little every day. I got to tell you, folks. I know your Pratt Pack has got a few issues, but I love talking business and candy business 
with Ty Ballou. And as Ty has said and I have said, it's summertime. Let your kids have a treat, but make sure they get out and exercise. Moderation, it's all good. And look, we baby boomers. He's 61 today. Happy birthday, Ty Ballou. Oh, thanks for putting that date out there, that age, Rob. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Happy I'm not... I'm not too far yeah. behind. I'm Great 60. Thinking, where am I going tonight, Rob? What am I doing tonight for my birthday? What are you doing for yeah, your birthday? I'm going to the Penguins game with my two sons, with Ryan and Ryder. I cannot wait. So nothing better than celebrating the birthday down at PBG Place, watching the Pens go up to nothing over Nashville. Don't forget Merritt and Allie and the grandkids and your... Oh, all those kids, too. Yeah, they'll be watching those at home. But the uh, the boys are into it as deep as I am. So we're, uh, we're going to try to get through as much this morning and... and uh, Go until uh, eight o'clock tonight. Wonderful his son-in-law. Talk to me about his fitness place and how's it going. Uh, Pittsburgh Pro Fitness is doing great. Eighty-two Center Avenue at Emsworth. We've been open for oh, a little less than a year and a half. I think the best personal trainer in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm a little bit biased, but Rob does a phenomenal job. We have classes. We do one-on-one -on -one training. We do boot camps, and if you just want just a just a really nice gym to attend, we have. Uh, some tremendous equipment there. So it's Pittsburgh Pro Fitness, 82 Center Avenue in Hemsworth. Come out. It's a great place. You can always get on the equipment, and you can meet the, the number one trainer in the area in Ralph Southall. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk hockey. I think a perfect word was used by Mike Sullivan after that first win in which they blew a three-goal lead. Bizarre. Peter Lovellette says, hey, we're 100% result of an orientated business team, meaning we just got to get back to the basics. And he says he was satisfied with, well, their performance, but obviously not the outcome. And he would have much rather had his team in the skates of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Let's talk about that strange, bizarre game that hopefully uh, it will be not so weird tonight. And the Pens, if they get a lead like that, they can hold on to it. And of course they won it. But man, it was a weird one, Ty. You know, Rob, I think it was game five or six with the Pens with 46 shots on goal. And 12 shots on goal, it's kind of a decent number for a period, kind of average. 12 shots for a game is ridiculously terrible, and to score five. But you know what? To me, you read into that and say, that's why the Pens are going to win the Stanley Cup. If you say, you know what, the Pens are going to play game one, you don't know what the outcome is, they're going to have 12 shots on goal, you think, okay, shut up, maybe one goal, and they win five. It sounds cliche, team of destiny here, but they just find a way to win. Jake Getzel, who is going to maybe be a healthy scratch, scores a game winner with a little over three minutes left. I think, I mean, if you are in Nashville, you're thinking, you know, you just can't stop Sid, you can't stop Gene. I mean, there's, something's going to happen in that game, and yes, I was sick when they were up 3 nothing. then it was 3-3. Three, three. You think, well, they're just going to let this get away. But this team and Mike Sullivan, you said it, always finds a way. There's always someone that steps up. You know, are they going to sweep Nashville? Probably not. I mean, it would be great to go to Nashville. I think it's game three is on Saturday being up 2 nothing. I want them to win tonight. I'll be there with the boys tonight. But, you know, I think they're going to take this serious. To win a game like that, in a game that they probably could have easily lost in the third period. just shows you the character and the resiliency. And it was an open skate yesterday. Sits down there. Sit. Doesn't need to have any extra practice. Is out there working on drills and things. So that's a captain of the team. So they're, you know, just a remarkable team, remarkable guys. I've said it. They're unselfish, and I can't wait till 8 o'clock tonight. They asked Mike Sullivan, divine intervention. He said, no. As Ty said, we just find a way to win. Matt Murray, 23 saves. Listen, four times on 11 shots, they made it work against uh, Pekka Rene. And this guy is a three-time Vezina Trophy uh, finalist. Yep. And, and what really amazes me, they had the one empty netter from Nick Benino. But really, defense is something that they're really known for. And they've got the defensive players that can keep up with Malcolm and Crosby. It was nice to see Jake Ginzel break that uh, goal uh, drought the other night. But P.K. Subban and Ryan Ellis, uh, they just said, look, right way, we know what to do, we'll get it going. And they still feel that they can build off of that 5-3 loss. Tonight, NBC Sports Network at 8 p.m., the puck drops. It'll be Doc Emmerich. It'll be Eddie Olchek. It'll be Pierre McGuire. Listen, Ty, one thing I do want to end on, you know, this is such an economic boom for the region. And I hope that you'll get downtown and support all the restaurants and bars. And uh -huh. for those who are fortunate to have tickets and hard-fought-for tickets like you, 
I think we got to give the, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, Rutherford, the general manager. We talk about Lemieux, obviously. We talk about Sullivan. We talk about the players. But there's much more to this Penguins team than what we know to be. Those players that I just mentioned and men that are highly recognized in the organization. But they make it a family experience. It's a great place to take your kids to watch a professional sports team and PPG Paints Arena second to none. And that downtown business district is incredible. So let's just finish by giving them a little bit of love who do this all the time at a high level. Can't agree with you more, Rob. I, you know, I, you and I have been to countless Steeler games. PNC Park is incredible doing that, even pit football and going up to Penn State. The experience, if, if you've not been to a Penguins game, let alone going to a, a Stanley Cup game, it is it is the most invigorating, exciting, and you're right, the experience in there. The fans are good. They're into it. They're into it from, from the moment they walk in. It's, it, it's just in, almost in, impossible to describe, and I think that goes from Mario all the way down. I know even before they own the team, but there is such a quality. There's something, there's something about that experience that is second to none, and uh, I know that for Ryan and Ryder are going tonight, they're just – Static, and I, we've been to playoff games for the Steelers, and we've been to you know even a playoff game for the Pirates. But you're right; that organization is incredibly well run uh, from everyone in there too. They should be very proud of it. Yes, it's generating a lot of money for the region here, but but you know God bless the Penguins to go back to back. It's just a remarkable thing. Hey, we'll give you a shout tomorrow afternoon to look back at the game. Enjoy your birthday, and, and I have to ask because one of my other favorite things. And I'm not as slim and trim as I used to be, and I am nowhere near the shape you're in. I have to ask you, what's your favorite birthday cake? My favorite birthday cake? Yeah. Um, Flavor. It's pretty basic. Probably chocolate cake with chocolate frosting. And <laughs> and uh, maybe a little scoop of vanilla bean ice cream on the side, and, and, and I'm in heaven. So, But uh, any cake is good. You know, I'm, I'm in, you know, doesn't matter in good shape or bad shape, you can always have some cake. But if any cake with, with friends like you or family is, is a good cake. I love your family, and uh, I love your friendship, and I'm just so honored to always have a chance to catch up with you. And as Marie Antoinette once said, let them eat cake. Enjoy your birthday, and we'll talk tomorrow afternoon, okay? All right, Robbie. Thank you so much. Go Pants. Folks, see you later tonight from Fox's Pizza, 3589 Broadhead Road, and we're going to be talking everything about small business. And Mario Leone is going to be there as well. He, of course, from Brewsters. And Ted Arnaud and I are talking the National Football League. That's all tonight. Busy night, busy day. But that's me, your Pratt Pack. So long, everybody.